Hi, and welcome to another lifetime training video. In this video, we're going to go over setting up a MyLapse RC4 decoder and having it talk to LiveTime. So I've got the hardware set up right here and plugged in. Um, I have it powered up and I have both types of connections that you would connect your uh, decoder with. So a serial USB cables right here as well as a Ethernet cable and I'll show you how to set up both. So the first thing I want to point out here in the decoder itself is that I'll zoom in on here that just sitting here idle I can hit this far right button to cycle through some information. The IP address shows up so if you're ever wondering and you want to hook up Ethernet what the IP address is it's right there. If you keep hitting the button it tells you the serial number um, if you hit it one more time, it shows the version. Right now, the latest version is 4.4. If your decoder does not say this, it means it's out of date. There's a firmware update, and you can go to My Labs to download it. We highly recommend that you do that because we've seen some problems with earlier versions, and that's why they update them. So definitely make sure that when you open it up here and you hit the button a few times, it goes to 4.4 like that. Okay, so now I'm back on the main menu of the decoder. So I'm going to switch over here to live time for a minute and you'll notice that I'm in the decoder section. So for those not familiar, all you have to do is go to the decoder icon here and click it. And right now I have nothing, I'm not connecting at all. I'm saying there's no decoder available. I'm going to change this to um, first try setting up a serial connection. So I, if I click on the serial USB port, here we go. At first the system says, hey, there's no COM ports detected and, hits, and I hit OK and I'm brought right back to um, connecting here. So if I do that, um, it's basically telling me I haven't hooked up my decoder yet. So to do that, just take the one end here, the serial end, and plug it on in. So I'll plug it in here. And then on the other end, take the USB and plug it into your computer. So I'll plug it in here. Okay. You hear the familiar Windows sound saying it's getting set up. And then when I click on serial to USB again, the system comes up. Now, just before I connect it here, you might want to confirm that Windows sees your uh, serial port. So I'm going to open this device manager button here and bring up the screen. And what you should see is this section right here where it shows the ports and it shows USB to serial cable. It also tells you the actual COM port, which is this COM3. You're going to need that because you need to select that in live time to communicate. So I'll go ahead and close this. And on the drop down, the only COM port I have available here on this computer is COM3. And if I click on it, give it a moment to communicate and it will start talking. And you'll know that it's start, starting to talk because you'll start seeing status records come in through here. So without even having to have somebody cross the loop or anything like that, every five seconds the MyLap decoder will send a ping to your computer saying, hey, new status, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, and we'll continue to do that. If you see this, you know it's good to go. Now one other thing, you might select this and then nothing happens. It's very important with a serial to USB that you're using the same protocol. So if you go up towards the top here, there is a section that says protocol and it says P3. And there's a couple of different options depending on the kind of hardware you're using. Um, you definitely want to choose P3 if you can. And if you have an RC4, you definitely support it because that will give you temperature, voltage, uh, additional car ID. But it's important that you set up your decoder to be able to talk in P3. So to do that, what you actually have to do is verify on your decoder that the RS-232 setting is set to P3. So go to your device, and if you hit the arrow button once, go ahead and go to the general option and hit the right button. If you hit the left button arrow down a few times, you'll eventually get to the protocol RS-232. Basically what this means is, how will this communicate with live time over the wire. And by default, it has highlighted, if I arrow through here, you can see it does different selections. It'll highlight the protocol. I can hit the button here with remote, enhanced, and P3. You definitely want to choose the P3 option. Then go ahead and hit the arrow and hit accept. And if you're gonna switch a protocol, it says, are you sure? You can hit yes, and it should go back to this menu. And I'm just gonna hit and wire back, you know, arrow down and go back out. But if you let it sit idle for a few moments, it'll go right back to the main screen here too, which is this. 
So if you make sure that the decoder is set to P3 and you make sure that the software protocol is set to P3 as well, they should start communicating and you should see the statuses continue. So at this point, I'm actually going to disconnect the USB cable and that should stop my communication here. Now, the other way that you can hook up a decoder is by plugging in an ethernet cable into it. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can talk to the decoder. One way is to hook up an ethernet cable and go directly from your computer to the decoder. I'm gonna do a different video to show how to do that because there's a couple of different things you need to set up on your computer to do it. In this scenario, I'm assuming that you have a switch or a router that you're plugging both your computer and your decoder into. In that case, just plug in the ethernet cable right to the decoder here. Sorry for my bad camera work. Okay, there we go. So that's all set. And when you plug in the ethernet, you may need to, or we recommend that you power off the MyLaps device and then plug it back in. That will power cycle the device. And the additional thing that it will do is it will reset the IP address. So we'll let this boot up here for a minute. And once it fires up, we can use that rightmost button here and hit it a few times and find out the IP address that it received from your router or your internet provider. Once that's set, we're gonna type it into LiveTime and LiveTime should just be able to start communicating to it right away. Okay, it's just about booted up. And there we go. So I'll hit the rightmost button here and there you go, 192.168.1.9. So I'll switch over to live time here and I will select that I want to communicate to this in Ethernet port instead. And then I will scroll down here and I'll need to type in the IP address, which was 192.168.1.9. And once that happens, You'll notice this goes green and it's going to start communicating. And you see here uh, the Ethernet records uh, keep coming through. So you can tell which type it's coming, it's uh, communicating on as well. So the serial USB communication log is, is going away and all the new Ethernet ones are coming through, showing me that I'm now connected. So this is all you should need to do. Once you have this set up, your MyLapse decoder is up and running. Make sure to keep an eye on the green icon in the upper right. As long as that is green, it is communicating. Uh, one other thing that comes up every so often is someone will set up a new track and they'll run uh, some laps and they'll notice that um, after they're running for a while that maybe a lap or two is missing. If that's the case, there is a setting that does help with that on the MyLapse uh, hardware and that's the squelch setting. So you might want to play around with getting that, uh, setting that value up or down. Um, setting more squelch will take out more of the um, interference in the area, and so it may be able to get a decoder that's crossing the loop uh, better than it was before. So to do that, hit this arrow key here and go down to, um, I'm sorry, go to timeline, hit the button here, and the fourth option here is squelch. If you hit that, you can adjust these numbers here from 30, you can do something higher or lower, um, and try that out. That should allow you to block out some noise or be more sensitive, depending which way you go, um, to be able to pick up on maybe those hard, those those cars that have, um, a, are, have the decoder mounted in a little harder place to, to reach it. So try that out, and that should take care of it. Hopefully this is helpful, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, thanks for watching.